Thank you for being with me here. here. Without the constraints of church politics or denominational bias, the Red Rooster pledges to preach to you the word of God just the way it is. Whether it offends you, your daddy, your mama, or your preacher. And now, without further delay, please welcome your host of the gospel message, the Red Rooster. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for being with me tonight. Please sit down. Thank you. Thank you. I am your host, the Red Rooster, and you're watching the Gospel Message. God bless you. Thank you for being with me. A lot going on. Looks like we're going back into some partial shutdowns and mandates and masking. It's crazy. But we've got hope in a man named Jesus. It ain't Fauci, it ain't Gates, it ain't CDC, it ain't GOV, it's in G-O-D. My God Almighty and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's our hope. So thank God yesterday's gone. The old Red Rooster's gone. There's been a new birth. And we're serving God. At least I hope you are. Uh, there is a way to do it. And uh, there's a way not to do it. Um, we might get into that a little bit tonight. Starting Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Just to kind of open up. Um, there, There is a way to serve God and there's a way not to serve God. One of the things that I've seen in life is, it's beautiful, is when you see somebody truly serving God from the heart. I'm not talking about somebody that's been there uh, in attendance, had a good attendance record, buddy-buddy um, with a pastor, uh, you know, deacons, whatever. That means nothing. But when you see somebody truly serving God with a, with a true heart, truly approaching unto God, that's, that's beautiful because you, you begin to see the change of the human being and not a change of selfishness not a change for somebody else but a change for god only and when when somebody does that and they're serious about it that's 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 god beautifying us with salvation is when we we do it from the heart then there's the other kind that uh you'll see people claim god and i see this a lot and i don't want to you know offend anybody if i do that's okay because, you know, we're living in a world that you can't, you cannot offend people. It just happens. People get offended over everything. But if you are um, a person that believes in um, very liberal, liberal ideas, um, you know, pro-abortion, uh, using the rainbow incorrectly, um, the far left, very liberal in your, in your ideas, that is enmity with God. It's a separation. Uh, matter of fact, let me read that before we go to Psalms 100. A lot of people, uh, whether they know better or not, they take the name of God and they, they claim that they know Jesus and that they, they love the Lord, but yet in their actions, their works, they do everything that he says basically not to do. But somehow they'll claim grace in their life. And I'm, you know, that, that, that doesn't work. It might in your mind and your imagination, but it, when it comes to truly knowing the truth of God, that does not work. And let's just get, uh, we're going to be in Psalms 100. And I tell you what, let's let everything go. But Matthew, the 15th chapter, I didn't know I'd get that first, but let's get Matthew, the 15th chapter. And like I said, there's a way to serve God and there's a way not to serve God. And most people, sadly, um, they choose the easiest route. Do you know what I'm talking about? They choose the easiest route. And that's not good, especially when it comes to God. There's a route, there's a way that leadeth to God. And it seems right, but the end thereof is destruction, Proverbs said. So I don't want it just to seem right. I want the route I'm taking. Don't care which, how hard it is, but I want the route to make sure that it leads to God 
and not the broad gate. You remember the verses, his principles of the doctrine. He said, wide is the gate and broad is the way. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go in thereat. But he said, straight is the gate. That's the route you want to take. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. I want to find that eternal life. Don't you? That's where I want to end up. But he said, few be there that find it. Look at the world today. Look at what, the way they think. Look at their, their life, what they live for. How many people do you know that truly live for the Son of God? Truly, how many people do you know? Most people, it's all for yourself. But yet in their mind, they think that they're okay and that God is right there with them. Let's listen. This is Matthew 15, I believe, if I can ever get there. Matthew 15. Yes. I tell you what, let's just, uh, let's just start the first verse. And we're going to go back, I'm, I'm hoping, to, to Psalms 100. Matthew 15, and we'll just start the first verse. Then came uh, to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, come on. Of all the things to ask the Son of God, if he truly at that time, they're saying, well, is this the Son of God? Why would the scribes and the Pharisees, why would they come to Jesus and worry about something frivolous as washing their hands? Everything people look at in this world, they look at mostly the outward appearance. Jesus came looking on the heart of men and women. He knew the exact words to say to speak to their heart. He knew some would turn away and follow him no more. But he knew there would be a few that would follow that straight gate, that narrow way, no matter what the Pharisees and scribes had to ask the Son of God. He knew there was going to be a few. Out of the thousands that heard the word of truth that leads unto life, there was 120 about on the day of Pentecost. Sad, pathetic, but that's what ended up following the Son of God. How many people do you know today that's truly following the Son of God according to truth, according to biblical principles, not, not vain thoughts and imaginations? Do you know 120? Listen to what he said. If scribes and Pharisees came asking carnal questions, all of our, our elders, they wash their hands before they eat Jesus. I mean, come on, really? But listen to what he said. Then he got right into the meat of it. And he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Bam, right there. Oh, that offends me. Who cares if it offends people or not? This is the only thing in life that doesn't change. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can bank your life on the commandments of God. It's one of the last things people care about. So let's just see what Jesus told him there. I mean, if he's going to get him, he's just going to go in. This time he just went right in for it, brought in the commandments of God. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God? By your tradition. For God hath commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curses his father and mother, let him die the death. I mean, there, there's a way to live. But then he said, But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, If it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. They were twisting the commandments of God. They were abusing the commandments of God, just like the world does today. He said, thus you have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. I don't care if you're left, right, Democrat, Republican, independent. I don't care what you are. If you twist the word of God to fit your agenda, then you're making the commandment of God of none effect for you. See, God's people, God's true believers, they're going to follow the commandments of God all the way to eternal life. It doesn't matter what people do around them. So, I mean, there's a way to worship God and there's a way not to worship God. Let me ask you a question. Is it possible to worship God in vain? Have you ever heard of that before? Let's just read the rest of this. He said, you hypocrites. Now, wait a second. Now, I don't want to get blocked here by the fact checkers. But Jesus called them hypocrites. I'm just reading scripture. 
Is there a time and a place to call somebody a hypocrite? Sure. He picked a perfect time to call. Now, do we go around calling everybody that that we think is? No, you should not do that. But when the word of God, he was the word in the flesh. When the word of God lines you up, it shows you and it shows me if I'm being a hypocrite. It shows me if I'm claiming something that I'm not. What did he say? He said, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people talking right at them? They're worried about little dirty fingertips eating, eating with unwashing hands. Come on. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart, the way they were worshiping, the way they were honoring, had nothing to do with their heart because he said, but their heart is far from me. Where is your heart tonight? What's it seeking after? What's it living for? What have you put before God? I'm the ghost for me. What are we putting before God? Every time I ask myself that, it, may, it checks me. It makes me see things about myself. How am I worshiping God with this? With this? Bow my head? What am I? Do? But where's this at? So what did he say? Then the next verse. Now, I know once in grace says you can't be lost no matter what you do. I disagree with that. I'm not getting in that tonight, but I'm going to read the ninth verse. It's the next verse. He says, but in vain they do worship me. So can you worship God in vain? Yes, you can. He just told them they could. He said, but in vain they do worship me. How do you do that? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. When you put up other doctrines above the commandments of God, it's vain worship. When you follow a man or a woman, any person, anything above God, it's vanity. It's vain worship. You can't put God on the back burner. He's got to be number one in my life. He's got to be number one in your life. That's the way God intended it to be. But listen to what he said. In vain, you can worship, by, or worship God in vain by teaching doctrines and commandments of men. You ever been to a church or a place or been around people and they'll hold up traditions of a minister or of this brother or this sister or the way this church did it or that church did it doesn't have anything to do much with this but they'll hold on to that with all they've got above the commandment they'll have church splits over dumb stuff well almost like well you didn't wash your hands before you ate your food i can't be a part of that who cares that's what he's trying to tell them you're worried about the frivolous stuff let's talk about the meat and bones of it that's keeping the commandments of god Speaking of the meat and bones of it, I'm going to be in Dayton, Ohio for a couple weeks. Any churches out there, if I'm able to go and maybe would like a visiting minister, I would love to come and, and, and preach for you. If there's anybody out there that listens to this and might need a, uh, maybe a pastor might want somebody to come in and help preach with him or something. And that being said, if and it's a private message, me if you would like me to do that. But Dayton, Ohio, somewhere around the Huber Heights, Dayton area, feel free to shoot me a text. But that vain worship is what we want to avoid. So what did he say? Then he called the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man. He wasn't worried about the dirt on your hands. But that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. It's what comes out of this end. What goes in is going to come out the drought. It's going to come out the drought. It's going to go in waste. He's not worried about that. It's gone. He's worried about what comes out right here. Listen to what he said. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? Oh, my goodness. You have offended me. I mean, come on. You call me a hypocrite. Then you said I, I was worshiping in vain. People cannot take constructive criticism anymore. They whine and cry and pout and run off. Or shut you down and become woke and want to shut your mouth and silence you. It's rampant all over the world. Jesus didn't come not to offend people. He came to tell them the God's honest truth. Whether I like it or whether you like it. Whether Fauci likes it. Whether Biden likes it. 
whether your mama likes it or whether my mama likes it. It don't matter. He came to tell the truth. And you know what's so beautiful? This word works for everybody the exact same. I don't care if you're the richest man on the planet. This word is for you. If you're the poorest man in the planet, this word is for you. You keep the same commitment. But let's just get back into scripture. So they, his disciples came to him and they're like, oh, well, let's maybe chill out here. They're offended at what you said. So he says, knowest thou that the, the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? In the 13th verse, listen to Jesus' answer. It, and, and, and as I'm reading and as I'm preaching, I'm saying, and it's, it's blowing my mind even more. He did not sugarcoat anything. At this time, he told them just like it was, and they were talking about the Pharisees and the scribes. Powerful people of their people at that time. But listen to what, how Jesus answered them. Then he answered and said, Jesus said, every plant. Now, I don't know if you know this, you should, but we are trees spiritually in the Bible. We go back to all throughout the Bible, he calls us trees. Jesus said, you show another tree by the fruit. We are trees. We are the good fruit. We're bringing forth bad fruit. Good plants, bad plants. It's just spiritually written. But Jesus answered said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. That's his answer to them. His disciples came and said, You've offended some people. Jesus just goes, Every plant that my Father hath not planted will be rooted up. What do you think he meant by that? My thoughts are, he just got done telling them the way it is, whether they liked it or not. Then found out they were offended. Then Jesus turned around to his disciples that he was teaching how to do ministry. And he said, don't worry about it. Everybody that hears my word, if that word doesn't go down and get planted in their heart, they're not worshiping from the heart. God's going to root them out of the earth in the end of time judgment. That's all he's saying right there. One quick answer. In other words, let them do their thing. Let them be offended. If they don't change, they will be rooted up in the end. Let's just read that again. I think it's beautiful. Jesus answered, every plant that my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. He, then he said, let them alone. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Look at our country today. Blind leaders of the blind. Look at our top leader today on this, on this, in this country. Top leader in this country. Think about it. Think about it. Just I'm not going to say nothing. Think about what's leading us. Then look at all the ones supporting that one. Where do you think it's going? Do you honestly think it's going to get better? If the blind lead the blind, where does it lead us? But see, that's the thing today. People, not many people want the truth anymore. Listen to what he said. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the, lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. He didn't say go stop them. He didn't say go put a wall up before the ditch so they don't fall. He said let them go if that's what they want. If they want to be blind. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter said, if our gospel be hid, they're blind to it. It's hid to them that are lost. They can take his name all they want to. They can hold the Bible far above their head and wave their arms and say praise God, hallelujah. But if they're not worshiping from the heart, it's vain and they're blind. They don't even know what they're doing. But you know what Jesus said? He wasn't worried about it. He said, let them go. Maybe after time, when people get tired of falling in the ditch, maybe there'll be somebody come by to help them get out of that ditch. But if that's where they want to be, Jesus said, let them go. I don't care if it's family, friends, loved ones, boss, business. It doesn't matter. If that's what they want to do, that's what they're going to do. But the people of God have to worship from the... I ain't worshiping in vain. 
I'm not abusing the rainbow the wrong way. I'm not claiming God with my mouth, but my heart's far from him. I know what the rainbow means. It's the covenant of God that he would never flood the earth again. That's what the rainbow is to me. Period. That's going to offend some. That's okay. Now, well, let's just keep reading. Tell the truth. Tell it. Have conversations with people about the truth. What happens? They'll both fall into the ditch. And then Peter... Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. See how they came for more understanding? They wanted to know more. Do you want to know more? Because that's, that's what it's going to take for all of us. We're going to have to want to know more. Because that's, that's how you approach God. You keep seeking him. You keep following after him. Listen to what he said. Are you also without understanding? He said, Do you not understand that Whatsoever entereth in at the mouth, going to the belly, and is cast out into the draw, like I was quoting earlier. But those things which proceed out of the mouth, where they come from? They come from this right here. That's when you truly manifest what you are. It comes out here, then it comes out here. And your actions, your life shows you what you are. Now, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Listen closely. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. You notice the whole world's full of these things. But somehow everybody seems to justify themselves. What's he saying? And I'll stop here and go back to Psalms. False witnesses, blasphemies. These are things which defile a man. Then he goes right back and finishes the carnality of the question of the scribes and Pharisees. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. In other words, don't worry about those type of things. They don't have any meaning. He's worried about this. Now, speaking of this, let's go back. Get Psalms. I was going to go back to Psalms 100. Speaking of the heart, stay in Psalms. Get Psalms 51. Psalms 51. I don't think I'll be too much longer. Psalms 51. And uh, mm, it's all good. I must. Wow. Uh, four, five. Psalms 51 and five. He says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin. Did my mother conceive me? We've all sinned, came ashore with the glory of God. But is there a way to get out of that? Is there a way to be cleaned up? Matter of fact, can that heart be clean from that iniquity? See, a lot of people teach, and I'm not going to get into it tonight, but a lot of people teach that you can't help but be in sin. I say, that's completely wrong. The power of God gives us the power to stop the things we were doing. Okay? That's the power of of the blood of Christ is to give us the power over that sin. That sin has no longer dominion over us. Uh, Romans the 8th chapter. Now, 50, uh, Psalms 51. What's he say? The next verse. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. See, that truth has to penetrate everything you've been taught. I don't care how far left or wherever you've come from. When you've been indoctrinated by the, by the teachings and doctrines of men and women that are contrary to this, this word of God has to bust through that hardened heart. It has to be created again and be cleansed. And it hurts, it doesn't feel good, and you will be offended at times. But that's okay. So he said, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. What does he say? Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. There's a way to be cleansed. And it's not a one-time prayer of raising your hand and confessing the Lord is your Savior and you'll never be the same. That's just the beginning. You just opened the door to a heart that might have been filthy, wretched, nasty, 
You just let God in. Now he's going to start doing the work. But people start worshiping in vain because they don't want to stop what they've been doing but still claim the grace of God. That's worshiping in vain. And the world's ate up with it. Don't get me wrong. Do we make mistakes? Yeah. Is God going to show me things about myself down the road that I might be doing now that I didn't know? Maybe I shouldn't have done? Sure he is. But when he shows you, that's when he knows your choice. Are you going to continue on in it? Or are you going to continue with God? That's how you stay clean. It ain't a one-time cleansing. It's not even close to biblical. But I'm going to, let me finish up here. Um, Purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. What are you talking about? What bones were broken? God doesn't go around with a baseball bat or um, hashtag uh, uh, Chuck uh, football bat. Uh, he doesn't go around and do that and start breaking people's bones. It's, that's carnal thinking. The bones that he breaks, it's spiritually. He crushes us. He destroys us so he can make us new again. The body of the son of when he was doing the last or the, the last supper, he said, This is my body which was broken for you. It's spiritual. We know not a natural bone of the Son of God was broken, but as when he was made sin for us, God broke that. God destroyed that sin on the cross. And if we believe by faith, he can clean us up and give us the power. To, to put away sin as well. We don't have to do those things that defile us. Remember the murderings, the thefts, the adulteries, the blasphemies, the lying, the false witness, all the, we don't have to continue in that. Through the blood of the covenant, he can heal us. He can bind up that broken heart, those broken bones. That man is broken. That woman is broken. He can heal us and bind us up. When he does that, it's our job and our commandment to follow the Son of God. It's a new and living way, and there's so much more. But let me finish this up. He doesn't make us clean to go back out into the filth. He wants us to stay clean. Listen to what he said. Next verse, ninth verse. Hide, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Here's the key. This is what I want to get to. Create in me a clean heart, not a vain heart, not a heart that's deceived itself. Jeremiah 17 said the heart is desperately wicked. Without God, our heart is desperate. It'll justify any action that we do. But when God comes into that heart, he cleans it. He makes it beautiful, puts it back together. Listen to what he says. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Then what's it do? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Church, what is salvation? It's not vain worship. Salvation is deliverance from something. He didn't save us and deliver us back into bondage. He saved us and gave us the power to overcome the world by not doing the things we used to do. Let me get one more verse. First Corinthians. Six and nine. He's talking to the church. I'm going to come to a close. He's talking to the church here. Once in grace, listen closely to this. First Corinthians 6, chapter 9, verse. He says, No, this is Apostle Paul. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. The unrighteous, period. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Where are we deceived in our heart? Let's, let's keep it clean. Let's keep it managed. This is a good ground, right? It's where the Word of God is rooted in, okay? That's where God plants His Word. Otherwise, we'll be rooted out like the Pharisees and scribes. So what did he say? He said, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or uh, adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves. I mean, it's the list similar to the ones that he said defile the man in Matthew 15. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He looked right at the church and read the letter. These type of people won't inherit the kingdom of God, period. Listen closely. 
11th verse. And such, such of these filthy people, I was one of them. Let's be honest with you. And I still have to fight those things because I'll go right back out in that filth again. Listen to what he said. And such were some of you. He didn't let them forget where they came from. Let's not get too high and mighty because it's all ground level, right? Such were some of you, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus. That's the word of God. And by the spirit of our God. Let me tell you something. You have to stay washed. Because if you don't, you'll end up a proverb. The wrong kind of proverb. I'm going to try to come to a close on this one. First, first, second Peter 2 and uh, and 19. Remember when he said that you make the commandments of God of none effect because you're doing the commandments of men. He's letting them, letting them know what they were doing. Second Peter, second chapter, 19th verse. These were people teaching things that they shouldn't teach. He said, while they promised them liberty. There were some teachers out there promising the people of God liberty. They were washed, and we're getting ready to read that they were. For while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Their life was defiled. That heart was serving God in vain. They were servants of corruption. They were still teaching some people. Listen to what happened. For of whom a man is overcome, of whom that those teachings, any corrupt teachings that overtake you, they bring you into something called bondage again. And you make the commandment of God of that effect. Listen closely. Of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. Listen very closely to these next couple verses. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, comma, they escaped the corruptions of the world, they were washed. Such were some of you, but you've been washed. You've been taught right. You've been cleansed. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's good, right? But then what happens if you let those corrupt teachings overtake you, justify your actions, and you start worshiping in vain again? Listen to what happens. Comma. It says, they are again entangled therein. What? The pollutions of the world. We just read it. They are again entangled therein and overcome. Don't tell me you can't be overcome by the world again after you've been cleansed by the blood of Christ. It just said that we already escaped the pollutions of the world. He's writing to the church, letting them know they could be overtaken by corrupt teachings. Did I know I was going to teach on this night? Absolutely not. Listen, listen to the next part. Let me just read 20 again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they escaped it, they were clean. That's the only way you can escape it. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. That ain't talking about just naturally. There's a judgment day for us all. Every plant that my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. You let those ungodly teachings back in lead you astray. You let go of the word of God. You might be able to quote scripture, hold a Bible, have good attendance, but that's still vain worship if you're not keeping the commandments of God. Period. And we'll come to a close with this. 21 and 22, last two verses. For it had been better for them, the ones that were clean, escaped. How are you clean? Through the blood of Jesus. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than, comma, after they had known it, not just heard it, but they known it. They were walking in the light of God. Psalm said, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. They were walking in the way of life. They were overcome by corrupt teachings and they went right back out on the world. He said the latter of them is worse than the beginning. What happened? It had been better for them to have not to known the way of righteousness 
that after they have known it, they were clean, they were washed, they escaped, to, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them once in grace. Let me ask you a question. Can you turn from the commandment? Because Jesus said, I know that his commandment is life everlasting. When you turn from the commandment, you turn from life everlasting. Now, let's just finish up. To turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them. See, it was already written. They already known it. They already read it. And what's that like? But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, truth. The dog. See this guy right here? He was a dog. Remember the, the verse, even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I was a filthy dog at one time. God was not in my life at all. But then I heard the word of truth, got offended a little bit, started looking at the light, came to it, changed my life, was washed. I escaped the things that had me bound. I ain't going back. Because what would that be? But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. Corruption came back in, come out, like a dog licking it back up. What else? And the sow that was washed, that pig that was washed. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. People want to claim grace, go back out in the world, say, oh, I'm not the person I should be, but got God's grace. What does that even mean? It's vain worship. Thank you for being with me tonight. Um, tune back in Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Um, and I didn't even look at any comments. I was, let the computer go. Let me get my little go away music here. God bless you. And I want you to know that uh, you have been watching the gospel message. And I am your host, the Red Bull. God bless you. Turn that up a little.